the uh, toward the end of the '60s, is that when the, uh, the the rumors about you being dead surfaced? Do you remember that? Do you remember yeah. remember how how that started? What, what were your feelings about that? Yeah, no. What happened was we did a cover for a record called Abbey Road. The idea was to walk across the crossing, and I showed up that day with sandals, flip flops, and so uh, it was so hot. And I kicked them off and walked across barefooted. So this started some rumor that because he was barefooted, he's dead. But it was a little bit strange because people did start looking at me like... Is it, is it him or a very good double? Well, that was the idea. That was the other part of it, that there was a guy who looked like you taking your place. No, well, this is him. Or is it? I was going to rant with you about uh, McCartney being dead. What is this all about? In October 1969, a disc jockey in Detroit received a call from a listener explaining that if some Beatles songs were listened to closely, clues would be heard. Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. Revolution number nine, backwards. Honey Anderman, Honey Anderman, Honey Anderman, Honey even though there were past attempts to spread the rumor, this time it really took off. It is 22 before the hour of 1 o'clock, WABC Chime Time. I just, the fact that there is something very strange about the Beetle Paul, the fact that the Beetle Paul may be dead. If McCartney was killed three years ago in an auto accident and a double put in his place. And a rumor had circulated through London that Beetle Paul McCartney had been killed in a car crash on the M1 motorway. There arose a rumor country. that Paul was really not Paul, but an imposter. A theory on Paul's death says he was out alone in his Aston Martin. He crashed and was decapitated. A Paul McCartney look-alike has been impersonating him ever since. The fans say they can prove it in the songs, in the jackets to the record albums, and in other places. Clues by the dozen are lurking. Three of the Beatles wear a red rose, while McCartney wears a black rose. Paul is the only one standing with his back to the camera. Inside the cover, McCartney's lookalike is wearing an armband with the letters OPD, which in England means officially pronounced dead. The McCartney uh, situation uh, is real. They replaced him with somebody special and did some plastic surgery. Calipers on the bridge of the nose will show that there were not one but two. Did the measurements and everything? My lord, there are two. Then we got Dr. Henry Truby. Dr. Henry Truby. Somebody else was singing at a time when the fans and when the label would indicate that it was Paul McCartney. Are you really telling us that the original Paul McCartney was not the later Paul McCartney, that there really was a double? It really is. It's more like it. Come on! It's the best Paul McCartney we've had. Refined, cleaned, groomed, and had more talent than the first one. It had been four years of instant success. The Beatles had become gods. You know, nobody heard anything, or not even, you know, a basic beat, I don't think. So they were too busy tearing each other up. I have prepared a statement which I will read, which has had John Lennon's absolute approval this afternoon uh, with myself by telephone. Uh, and this is as follows. The quote which John Lennon made to a London columnist more than three months ago has been quoted and represented entirely out of context. When John said the Beatles meant more to kids than Jesus, a Beatles boycott in the southern states began as the Beatles toured the U.S. for the last time in August 1966.
they burned their records and spit on their images. But before they burned the records, they had to buy them. We meant more to kids than Jesus did. I was just saying it as a fact. My view on Christianity is directly influenced by the Passover plot by Hugh J. Schoenfield. I was using expressions on things that I just read. The Passover plot speculates that the Bible is a hoax and that Jesus didn't die on the cross. Jesus survived, and in order to create a new religion with himself as the Messiah, he made people believe that he'd risen from the dead. He said to me once that the children of 2000 will be listening to the Beatles. By 2012, the masses will be where we are today, and Paul should be Jesus by then. On August the 29th, 1966, the Beatles took the stage for the final date of their third sellout tour of America. But this would be the last ever Beatles concert. We were just tired, you know, it had been four years legging around screaming in this mania, you know, that we weren't going to tour again. We said, well, how, what are we going to do? Like announce it? The Beatles have given up tour. And we said, no, just don't say anything. But I was really too scared to walk away. I was thinking, well, this is like the end, really. You know, there's no more touring. And I was dead nervous, so I, I said yes to Dick Lester that I would make this movie with him. I went to Almeria, Spain for six weeks. Ringo came to Spain when John and I were down there. George, like I said, was doing the Indian stuff. I, I, what was Paul doing? I don't know what he was doing. Tuesday, September 13th, 1966 the Melody Makers Awards would be the last time a camera caught a glimpse of Paul McCartney for the next three months. Because of Paul's absence, rumors suggested he left the band and the Beatles were breaking up. Beatles manager Brian Epstein had to make a statement on October 3rd denying that Paul had left the band but confirming they would never perform live in concert ever again. I didn't really know how big this rubbishy rumour had got out. Uh, you know, it was all beyond and above the five of us. And I thought that I scotched the rumours in London with various announcements. I don't think that you'd get any one of those of them or me to categorically state that they will never appear in public again but i don't think that it will be in the concept that we've known previously it's our pleasure to report that beetle paul mccartney is alive and well and as he puts it unconcerned about the rumors of his death despite all rumors and reports to the contrary paul mccartney of the beatles is alive and walking around if a little irritated that people keep saying he is dead. Here's a picture of him made Wednesday night in Glasgow, and he is on his feet, alive. Well, I don't try filming it, but you might get some trouble. The Beatles have kept pretty much to themselves in the last seven or eight months. There have been thousands of rumors about their breakup. They'd say they're not going to tour anymore. They're not going to travel around. Are the Beatles going to go their own ways in 1967? They could be, you know, on our own or together. We're always involved in each other, whatever we're doing. Do you foresee a time when, in fact, the Beatles won't be together and that you'll all be on your no, own? No. Do you get, to, you, if you got tired of each other? No. When, when we got into the Sergeant yeah. Pepper sessions, I mean, they, they were obviously different people to what I was. It was just weird and, and a lot of sadness around and it wasn't sort of spoken of a lot and I think a lot of stuff was getting bottled up and oh. it was Paul that sort of, you know, pu pushed them all the time, you know. There 
Right at the end, the guy comes up and he says, I bury Paul. See if you can hear it. You know, I heard. Now, wait a minute. If you contact um, the Beatles record company, they'll tell you that what the guy is saying is, um, I'm very bored. all sounded like I buried Paul. But we didn't even think of that. I mean, of course, there's a slight chance that John did not tell me. End of Strawberry Fields, I'm saying cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce, not I buried Paul. And the rumour was started, obviously, by some madman. We sit out Strawberry Fields forever. We were convinced a few lads had discovered the Blackbird's message. <laughs> When the Liverpool people came here to London, they brought with them the freedom, that the money they've made. A centre is what is, is needed, that's what the bookshop here, Indica, was designed. But the bookshop wasn't enough. A newspaper seemed to be the only way to get them all to meet. One of the staff members and a co-founder held a competition in the first issue of the newspaper. His name was Ion Iarkamo, apparently a Polish filmmaker. The same Ion Iarkamo who ran this ad in the next issue. The same Ion Iarkamo who contributed to the Church of the Final Judgment and their magazine, The Process. The same Ian Iarkamo who engaged his friend Yoko Ono to perform an exhibition at his own Indica Gallery. She was having a show at this gallery. So anyway, I finally got to this show and uh, she had all these things on, like all these like hammer nail things and, and that clock there where you listen to it to a st stethoscope. All the things, the, there was this ladder and a thing on the ceiling. So I climbed the ladder and on the ceiling it said, yes. Uh, but he said yes, and that was enough, you know. And then she came up and said uh, she didn't know who I was. Neither did know about us. No. Yoko came round to my house. She knew who the Beatles were she because... She had met him. She met you. Yeah. She knew of the Beatles. Neither did know about us. I don't know, you but know. But of course, I mean, I, if she I, knocked I just... on your door, she knew you were a Beatle. The same Ian Ekromo that wrote... Paperback writer. The same Ian Irkamo, whose name backwards sounds like, listen, Ian Irkamo, Ian Irkamo, Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney. So my was anyway turned me on to a lot of that International Times, the, the yeah. Evergreen, all those little things. There were lots of very far out. And we used to do a lot of that. It, it, this means that someone like Paul McCartney is on the scene and have supported it in both direct and indirect ways and will probably say we have the same concept of freedom as he does. Have all found a certain similarity in their aims, more intimate and direct. So way before John met Yoko and got avant-garde, I was like the avant-garde London bachelor with, with Miles, my pad in St. John's Wood. That I was making like eight movies and we were showing them to Antonio Vianney. I was in quite a sort of heavy avant-garde trip. I'd sit with Burroughs in a basement. And I remember sitting around with Burroughs, you know, to do little tapes and backward crazy stuff. Sell out your son. Forever. 